Chakra and Roberto Schomp and my colleague to you know to spend time with me and doing this research and I want to thank you all the person who organized this event. Now I just want to go through the, the study and show you what we did. Well, placing some premises, I want to be quick because we have time to uh, talk about uh, the introduction. Well, uh, everyone knows what is osteopathic medicine, already said several times today, and what is the somatic dysfunction. Okay, uh, we actually detect this somatic dysfunction by the TART. Okay, but what is very important is that to detect, we need a test, okay? And the core of this research was actually the right reliability. Why is important? Reliability <laughs> is important because we need to know what to do and we need to trust what to do for the diagnosis, the prognosis, and the monitoring of the patient. So it's defined as reproducibility of findings when a test is repeated to evaluate an unchanged attribute. Okay, unchanged attribute. That's a very important things. Okay. Now, we already said something about the inter and intra examiner, so I will go quick, quick to the next point, which is that this is, it was the first review about the study, the osteopathic studies. We saw something this morning in the study of uh, Dr. Degnard about um, the studies for manipulative treatment. These were only about osteopaths. Okay, so the objective was to identify, evaluate, and synthesize each study about the diagnostic reliability of osteopathic tests. <laughs> so what we did actually was a literature research. These were the measures. This was the period of time, the databases, and the exclusion criteria were studies not based on reliability, thus not diagnostic, and those not adopted uh, diagnostic methods other than osteopathic ones, such as chiropractic. So. To do that, we use a tool, it's called CARO, and it's CARO is a tool for the assessment of the quality of the studies. We already said something about the quality today. So it is composed from 21 questions to put actually in a checklist of 11 items. To answer to these questions, you have uh, four type of answer. It's yes, no, unclear, and not applicable. So yes, it's like um, good uh, when uh, it's a uh, good aspect, no when it's not good, unclear when something is unsure, and not applicable when it's actually a question that cannot be answered because it's not linked with the, uh, our kind of field uh, with osteopathy. So the 11 items are uh, summarized in these seven principles, and we will see that later on. Okay, let me show you some results. So that was the leader's research. So we put the inclusion criteria and the exclusion criteria, and we found 67 studies. Then we actually checked properly, and we found some studies not really based on osteopathy and reliability. Then we, then we had 32 studies. Then we exclude something non diagnosis studies, so like a review studies. And then we had 21 studies. We found some uh, kind of reliability uncorrelated. I mean, even if it was about the osteopathy, it was a kind of um, testing some instrument, but not the um, osteopaths, okay, or something made on animals. Then we go to 17 studies, where we found actually two studies made from um, the others were osteopaths, but not the examiner. So the examiner were like physician or physiotherapist. Then we go to 15 studies. Okay, let me show you the, the first <coughs> table, sorry. Well, uh, I just wanna show you the, the main things, the general things, so the country. We have studies from USA, Australia, UK, Austria, but we don't have any studies from the most important country in Europe, like France, Belgium, and Italy, even if we had a good background about the osteopathy. Regarding to the structure, so the region, the body size, we have studies on the uh, back, on the pelvis, pelvis and back, and the cranium. And all the tests we found used were from uh, like the TART, okay, so the same criteria, so texture change, asymmetry, uh, restriction of motion, and tenderness. And for the cranium, we found lots of studies, well, uh, about the cranial rhythm impulse, as we said earlier on. Now. What we can say, according to the yes replies of the CARO, that the quality of the studies was good. Okay, so the structuring of the studies was good. 
but unfortunately the re reliability is pretty low. I uh, just want you to remember that we have two ways to measure the, the reliability. To mo uh, this morning we saw the, the case statistic. This is for uh, um, categorical uh, data. And we have just the, inter in the ICC for uh, the continuous data, okay? But most of the studies are at the, the case, case statistic. Okay, this, this is a table where we summarize all the answers of the cardinal. And now you can see that every answer is linked with the seven <coughs> principles I told you. So the subjects, the examiners, the time, uh, sorry, the blinding protocol, the order of evaluation, the time interval, the test, and the statistic. So quickly, I just want to show you the answer. So item two and item eleven got most of the answer yes. So it means that the, the choosing of the examiners and, and the statistic measures was good. Now the worst was the item seven. So because the examiner were not actually blinded about additional cues on the body. So this is important because we will see that blinding is uh, really the, the most important problem for reliability studies. Then not applicable item five. There was no possibility to compare the findings with the gold standard because we don't really have a gold standard. Only, we found only uh, one studio is made from Saturn and Halley uh, where they actually compare the the, the findings, they are, it's uh, pretty similar to the one we saw this morning from the DNR. There was a marker on the spinous process, and they compared that one with the X-ray. Well, that was a gold standard, but the rest is impossible to, to answer, I mean, at least answer at the question. I'm clear for the time interval, because we were not really sure, we don't really know. That's another problem. We don't really know what is the right time interval between the measurements. Okay, then I just want to show you now I, the next items, like the item one, uh, where we actually are not sure. Well, for example, the, the choosing of the subjects were, was good, but we, were, uh, we were, weren't sure about the characteristic and the sample size. So there were maybe some bias on the studies, or the sample size was not enough to give a statistical significance to the studies. Then, pretty good were the item three about the inter-examiner and I'm talking about the blinding. Okay, that was pretty good set. And about the test, the application interpretation was good, but we also had some doubt about the interpretation of the test because we saw that different people can interpret the same test differently. Okay, then nothing to say about the item eight and um, we were not sure about clinical blinding of the clinical information, mostly because sometimes it was not written on the, on the study, so we were not sure it was blinded or not. And then the same about the intra-examiner. This is the problem in osteopathy because we use our hands, so it's pretty difficult to be blinded about our own findings. Okay, this is the, the table you can see also on my poster. And I wanted to focus on the quality of the studies and on the case statistics of the concordance. Okay, uh, just going through, uh, this is a table where we summarize just the answer of the card. And I wanted you to focus on the yes replies of, on the table. That means this is like, um, it's like a rank of the studies, okay, from 1 to 15. Well, uh, I wanted to use this table to show you what is the reliability about the main body sites we, we saw earlier on, so cranium, pelvis, and the back. Talking about the cranium, I want to mention the HALMA studies, where we found an intra, uh, it was an intra-examiner study, where cranial strip patterns was the best, with K equal to 0.67, so substantial, and the rest was lower. Okay, talking about the pelvis, there's the Stobel et al. studies, and um, here, it's important because they actually made um, a study about the asymmetry, but they did a, a consensus training afterwards. Didn't our tomorrow talk about the consensus training, and you can see that actually improved the reliability. Then talking about the back, didn't 
indirect summary. This is in interesting because he compared the uh, outcomes with the chart. Okay, so we actually have a chart. We have a rank uh, between the, the four uh, criteria of the chart. So tenderness, so pain, pain provocation was the best one. Now, what can we see? What can we say? The scientist is not the person who gives the right answer, it's the one who asks the right question. So we need to put some questions just to discuss what we saw. And stability. Is the time interval compatible with stability of the variable being measured? Well, Fryer et al. Uh, just focused on the changing of um, motion of the patient, and they said that maybe lying for a long time during the experiment it's, it doesn't help the reliability because we can actually change the situation of the patient. Then degree of palpatory pressure, so uh, in the, the force that we put on our hand, it influenced the mnemonic charts. Yes, it could. We have lots of others that actually support this thinking. Then what about different subject position? Spring et al. said that there is a modification and changing about muscles and fascia, so it can actually uh, change the reliability. And then cranial rhythm in the impulse is a dynamic phenomenon influenced by subject level of consciousness. Well, yes. Halma did something interesting. He found three different uh, change in the patient. One was awake, one was sleeping, and the other one was reawakened. And they found that the uh, cranial rhythm impulse changed. So, can you imagine if we actually do a reliability study and we don't think about these things? And then Moran, what actually do was measuring the heart rate before the test. And they did the test only when the heart rate was stable. So that's just an example of what can we do to try to help uh, the improving of reliability. Now, examiner experience, sorry, is dependent, actually not. We, we heard something about it uh, uh, this morning, about no difference, actually, between osteopaths and students. Training, if a uh, training can improve the reliability, again, we saw something, and the answer is yes, and these are the authors that support it. And a realistic model, useful, yes. Stovall and actually made uh, a pelvis uh, to train uh, their students, and Vanguard did the same. There's another study where there actually is a hidden heel wedge underneath the, the, the heel to see, to check the asymmetry of the, of the pelvis, so they actually used something. Then, okay, yeah, just go through the hand. Well, uh, I want to know that we always talk about uh, this objective stuff, but there is the osteopathic touch. We saw something uh, from uh, Lisa Burado earlier on, and uh, this is subjective, okay? And we can maybe calculate, we can measure the reliability, but there is also this part of us, which is the osteopathic touch. It's our instrument, so it's not easy to uh, measure it. Then, going to the conclusion, we have good quality of the evaluated studies. It's, uh, the inter summary reliability is low. There's no statistical difference between, in respect, sorry, to region, degree of upper pressure, and examiner experience. And we maybe have to talk about the teaching institution and their curricula. I know that some person can be upset about this because we study a lot and we think that we have all the instruments to to test and treat the person, our patient, properly. But we have to standardize and maybe do what we heard, which is the consensus training. And just to close, a small number of studies. I just want to know that in the US, in 2012, there were 82,500 osteopaths. And this is the base. I mean, re reliability is really important. Otherwise, we cannot trust any kind of test in osteopathy but there are not lots of studies. Because Leonardo da Vinci said, no human investigation can be called real, it cannot be demonstrated mathematically. Thank you.